Hi there, this is Pastor Ashola here and Doris Famelusi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Rock Church, where you'll find engaging content that would uplift your spirit. And whilst you're here, remember, turn on your notification, leave a comment for us, subscribe to our channel, and share this broadcast if it's a blessing. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Lift up your voices one more time. Pray and, you know, just intercessors if you have your microphone you need to take this hallelujah lift up your voices and decree and declare one more time every generational pattern every generational pattern i cannot pray that for you you need to open your mouth and enforce it every generational pattern every, every generational, generational pattern. pattern every ancestral pattern every ancestral pattern every trend every trend whatever it is whatever it is from my mother's house from my, from my mother's house, house from my father's house from my father's house from my, house, house, from my extended family from my extended whatever family whatever is going on whatever, whatever is going, going on, on i am demarcated i am demarcated i am I am exempt. I am, exempt. I am protected. I am protected. In the name, of, in the Jesus. name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every pattern of diabetes. Every pattern of diabetes. Open your mouth and pray. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Every pattern of cancerous cells. Every pattern of cancerous cells. And growth. And growth. Trains of tumors. Trains of tumors. They say your father's father yes. and your father's mother and the, the other. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty Amen. Name of Jesus. By the Amen. covenant of the blood. Oh, yes. Jesus, my brother, I am yeah. separated I am from separated. the blood. I am separated, separated. I am separated the blood. by the blood of Jesus. Every pattern of mental sickness. Every, Every pattern, pattern of mental, of mental sickness. sickness. I am separated. I am separated. My children are separated. My children are separated. In the mighty name, of, the name, Jesus. Of, mighty name Jesus. of Jesus. Every spirit of generational poverty. Every spirit, Every spirit of, of generational, generational poverty. poverty. I liberate myself from it. I liberate, I liberate myself, myself from, from it. it. You hear some families, they say, nobody ever makes it. Nobody ever makes it to limelight. People are always suppressed and always not with me. Somebody say not with me. Not with me. It ends with me. It ends with me. It ends with my children. The pattern is broken. Pattern is broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. They say that's how when people nobody gets married in that family even the ones that have gotten married divorce separation it ends with you amen, amen. in the mighty name of jesus amen. 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 say people don't people don't last in marriage that's not what the word of god says people don't last in marriage in that family that's not what the word of god says yes. hallelujah amen Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your voices and say, Lord, I am a partaker of your covenant. Lord, I am a partaker of your covenant. Therefore, everything that the covenant has for me, everything that the covenant has for me, I enjoy. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Awesome, God. Awesome God. Amen. Awesome God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a beautiful time during praise and worship. Can you all put your hands together for yourselves first? For yourselves? Come on now. Look at somebody and say, hey. I, I didn't hear it. Tell somebody else. Aha. Tell them that's how you praise. Tell them, you know how you were dancing today? Tell them, tell ah, Come on. You know how you were dancing today? That's how you dance. In the presence of...
house of God. Give Jesus a big hand. Woo. Now tell the person behind you, say, you know how you were shouting today? That's how you shout in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Woo. Come on. Somebody's letting out another shout. Come on. Oof. Carabos. 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 Rabobo shundelebos. Carabababa sindelebo carabas. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's so much joy in the atmosphere. The spirit of gladness, the oil of gladness is in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The spirit of just enjoy that awesome oil of gladness. Amen. And right now, anything that has put you down, anything that is, you know, you're just sat there just trying to say, oh, they're so happy. They don't know what's going on with me. Whatever it is that has caused you sorrow and pain will cause you to shout today in the name of Jesus. There's going to be a turnaround in that situation. There will be a turnaround in that situation. There will be a turnaround in that situation. And that that has made you cry, you will rejoice over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Ah, aha. We can now move to the final, the grand finale. Hallelujah. The title of this morning's message is Reformation Through Worship. Of course, it is the last of the three Sunday series. Amen. Somebody write that down, type it down in your phone, your notes, write it down, Reformation Through Worship. Reformation Through Worship. How worship can change us. How worship, you could see this morning, the way that we engaged in praise, the way that we just offered it. It was there's just something that happens when you offer God worship. He just comes and sits in it. That's what happens when you offer God, when you offer God worship. He comes and he sits in it. Amen. He just takes over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you for a time in your word. Every time we spend in your word is valuable time. Every time we spend in your word is time to receive value. Every time we spend in your word is time for reformation. Every time we spend in your word is time for transformation. Every time we spend in your word is time for for change. Amen. It's time for something new to jump out of your word into our spirits. And we bless you for that. We give you all the praise. Come and speak to us. Come and speak to us. Bless the speaker and bless the hearers also. May we at the end of today not only be hearers, but may we be doers of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Last week and the week before, we dwelt, we talked about praise. So much about praise. Hallelujah. And, and you can see the difference today. Amen. You can see the difference. Somebody wave your hands to Jesus and say, thank you, Lord, for your working in our lives. We may be work in progress. I said, repeat after me, church. <laughs> We may be work in progress, but we are making progress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, some people uh, 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 say they are work in progress from day one of Christianity till 30 years after, they are still work in progress. When you see those signs, work in progress on the road, you see it for one week. After, you, you stop seeing it because the work is done. Amen. So Christians need to stop taking, you know, in, I, well, I'm a school teacher in UK. I used to be a school teacher, so I, I can, I'm permitted to use the word. Christians need to stop taking the mickey. Like, does that make sense? Amen. Amen. We need to stop it. Like, I'm work in progress, you know, I'm work in progress. Yes, we know you're work in progress, but the progress has to progress. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, I am progressing. 
Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise and worship. We often use them, we use them together. Although they complement one another, of course, like what we've done today in practice, because praise and worship is not just about the singing that we've done, but it is part of it. Amen? It's part of it. So in, in, in Christian setting like this and in church, we would, we would always say, oh, praise and worship and all of that. But I know that the way we've dissected praise and we've gone through it and you've seen what it means to praise God, that you cannot, the one that you adore, you will praise. The one that you love, you will praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I just need to share something before I forget uh, that I saw. I just, one of my daughters in the spirit, she was just, just speaking a language, my language to me. Listen, she's not, I mean, in this church, one of the daughters in this church, just speaking my language to me. Like, I speak Ikweri language from Nigeria. So, nobody speaks Ikweri. I went to minister in London once. And after ministering, I, I think I shared, it was a marriage conference for singles or something. And I think I'd shared where I came from. At the end of that meeting, one girl, young girl, ran to me. And she said, she just, she sat by my side and she said, I'm actually Ikweri. Can you believe it? I said, you don't see Ikweri people anywhere you go. <laughs> and she was so shocked. So, yeah, people don't, I don't find people who speak Ikweri. Does that make sense? No, nobody speaks my language. It's hard. One day, I met someone in Kent. One, I went to drop my children in school, and as I was leaving, one lady, I just heard her screaming on the playground. And she was and she was just screaming, Chimene, Chimene. In Ikwere, Chimene is a name in Ikwere. It's also an Igbo name, but it's different. Chineme or something. But you know, that's similar, but you never call an Ikwere man Igbo. Never. If you don't want trouble. So, but it's. <laughs> Angie's laughing, she knows. <laughs> Hallelujah. So never do that. And I know Sister P, Auntie P knows as well. You don't call an Ikwere person Igbo. So when she screamed, Chimenem, Chimenem, I was like, seriously? She's not, this is a Nigerian, obviously. And not only is she Nigerian, this is, they can only be Ikweris. For you, and for that name to be Chimenem, they can only be Ikweris. I just went to her, I said, are you new? She said, yes. I said, where do you come from? She said, we come from Port Harcourt. I said, I, I'm from Port Harcourt. She screamed. And that was it. The next Sunday, she followed me to church, Sister Augusta. And, you know, and so on. And it's the, it was, the rest of it was history. She was here until she relocated back to Nigeria with her children. In fact, the last time I went to Nigeria, she took over my... There was driver. She gave me... She took over the whole thing. Before, before I wake up in the morning, Pastor, where are you going today? What do you need today? This was... Do you understand? Hallelujah. So, you don't see Ikwere people. But in the spirit last night, this sister was speaking Ikwere to me. And speaking, he queried to me and speaking. So I told Pastor, I said, How is it that all of a sudden this sister is speaking, he query? Nobody speaks, he query. Nobody understands, he query. My husband is Yoruba, by the way. And I speak a bit of Yoruba, you know. But nobody speaks, he query. How is this lady? She's not even Nigerian. How is she able to speak, he query, like this to me? And I, I, so I asked God, I said, ah, Why is this lady now speaking, he query? And God said, when somebody begins to speak a language that only you and her understand, there's a level that person is coming into. There's a level of love, a depth of relationship that that person is coming into. Because it takes someone who speaks your language to interpret you. It takes someone who speaks your language to understand you. This morning I was calling my daughter's full names and my son said, oh, I never heard that one. Her name is Temitokwe, Victoria, uh, Homa, Sarima. Those are the two Ikwere names. Of course, you know there's a long list of Yoruba names. From grandfather, grandmother, her great-grandmother calls her Olua Tose. Her grandfather calls her Olua Pelumi. Her grand, her grand auntie calls her Olua Ebu Olua. So there's a whole load of Olua Olua Olua. But today I was. <laughs> but today I called her a name, which my mother called her her Ikwere name, which is Homa. 
Homa means something good. Igbo people will say in Homa. You see, we are not Igbos. <laughs> so now, so I called her that, and I and I called her Sarima. Sarima is deep joy. My grandmother gave her Sarima, and I've always loved that name. So today, I just felt like calling her Sarima. So I was calling her Sarima. We need to go. And Toby was like, "What kind of name is this? How many names does this girl have?" Like. <laughs> You know, how many names does Temi have? Everybody has a name for Temi and all that. But Sarima is that query name, you know? Amazing, lovely name. It's, it's, it's like it, the, Igbo, the Igbo version or Delta version is Aunli. Aunli, Aunli. You know, Sarima is like joy. You know, there's a joy, a deep joy that wells out of you. It's a beautiful name, but it's an query name. You don't hear... Uh, those kind of things and my son was just telling me and I said oh this is an equilibrium and we talked about uh, about it and everything but where am I going I'm just I'm saying that God was saying to me that some of you here are going to begin to speak each other's language so there's going to be so much love flowing so much understanding flowing in the house amen it's already happening it's already happening how many of you know that if we speak if I speak in the same language Hallelujah. It doesn't mean you won't be offended with me, but you'll be quick to understand. It doesn't mean you won't be... Up. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. It's a good place to clap. So if we're speaking the same language, you will... Ah, you will not, you will not misinterpret me. If I'm speaking Yoruba with Pastor Odun, there's every tendency that there's a level we get to. My ability will end. Ekaroma, Ekaro Pastor Pastor Odu, Shet Es Sudada, Ah Pastor Emmanuel Unko, Show Owa Oti Loyal Bishé, Ah Edupelo Waloru, Ah Thank you Jesus. Most of Fulano, Lano, Lenny, Lola, most of Fulano. See, so it gets to a place where it starts to shake. It gets to a point where it starts to shake. But because, but if I begin to speak with Auntie P, Auntie P, all of in the emeritus. Oh, you got that? You got what? Go up now, now, now. So, H E. He just he put he put a hand in bread. He hand in in the noya. Eh, chukwe mela. Blessing and no. Ngozi chi. Oh look, we can't, we cannot stop. We can't stop. There's, a, there's no level we go to. We can't stop. Listen to me. Many of you are going to be speaking each other's languages. In the spirit. Hallelujah. In the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. So when I tell you off, and you, you just be like, ah, Pastor D knows what she's saying. So she, you know, she knows what she's doing. That's, you just, we'll just be flowing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh my God, receive that language. Receive it. Husbands and wives are going to be speaking the same language. I hear it in my spirit right now. Husbands and wives are going to be speaking the same language. So that they don't spend time trying to interpret their vision, trying to interpret. They don't waste time. They already, they understand. Hallelujah. Mothers and children are going to be speaking the same language. In the mighty name of Jesus. So when you do your eye, as a warrior mom, when you do that, the child understands. It's not only, not language of the mouth. Body movement. Eye movement. Hand movement. Smile. That comedian that came to pastor's ch- uh, wed- uh, event, birthday, golden jubilee, he said, those days, when you, go to your, with, when you would go with his mom, to a family or maybe neighbor's house and they offer him food. He said, as he's taking the food, the laughter that his mother will laugh, like, that you will know the difference. You know, all of a sudden, his mother that was laughing, ha ha, mama taiwo, <laughs> all of a sudden, his mother would just go, ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. So he would just drop the food. Because he knows there's a difference between <laughs> and hey, whoa, my man, Gozi. Are you? Hallelujah. 
Warrior moms, your children will begin to understand your body language. They will begin to, they, you won't need to talk. They will know what you're saying. In the name of Jesus. One time, my son Toby was saying, why do I not ever get what I want at every time I ask my mom? But every time I ask mom, and Toby just said, you don't ask at the right time. That's just, Toby, you don't, you don't ask at the right time. You have to know when to talk to mommy. You have to know when to ask. Amen. Hallelujah. The children will understand us so much. Your children will understand you so much. I don't know why this has graduated into this. But God was saying, parents and children will be speaking the same language. People will not take advantage of your family. Siblings and extended family will not take advantage of your family. How many of you know that if you don't teach your children to understand your body language, if you don't teach your children to understand you, outsiders will get information from them that you don't want out. Amen. There are things that don't go out of the family. Outsiders will get it out of them. Why? Because they have not learned the language they should be speaking and not speaking. Amen? From today, every child that is floating in that area receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. You will understand. They will understand. They will understand in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to just read this sermon, so just flow with me so that we can close. Amen. <laughs> because I've taken so much time now of my, of my uh, word time. Praise God. Hallelujah. So praise is an expression of approval, an expression of admiration. Remember, we, we've dealt with that. Amen. Write it down if you want to. Praise and worship are two different things. Even though we use them together, even though we, they, go, you know, they go together, but they're kind of like different because uh, uh, praise is you're expressing adoration, you're expressing admiration. But when it comes to worship, it's, it's different. Amen. Another difference from last week's service is that praise, you can praise me. You can praise anybody. You can praise a human being. And you can praise God. You can praise anything. If I say this fan is really working, it's done, it's time. I'm praising that fan. I say, wow, that's really keeping me cool and everything. It's doing really well. I'm praising it. So you praise, you can praise anything, you can praise anyone. And surely you can praise God because God is always doing things in your life. Amen? Worship is different. Amen. So... And when it comes to God, we praise Him and acknowledge and appreciate Him for the things He does for us. It's our way of giving Him thanks. He is worthy of our praise. Somebody lift up your voice and say, God is worthy of my praise. The Bible is full of instructions of praise the Lord, praise you the Lord, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph, Psalm 150, Psalm 148, Psalm 1, all over the Psalms, instructions why we need to praise God. Praise Him in the morning, praise Him in the noontime, praise Him, instructions why we need to praise God. So if the people of the old praised God, we ought to praise Him even more. Amen. Praise Him in the morning like we did this morning, wherever we leave home, in the car, blasting the praise. Amen. How many, um, how many people here enjoy blasting Praise and worship in their car. That's right. That's the way it should be. Amen. Hallelujah. You should do that at home, everywhere. YouTube is there. If you, I, Apple, iTunes, whatever. Everything is there. Hallelujah. There are other sounds that I don't even know, but they're there. Praise God. God deserves our praise. Hallelujah. If you don't even have, just put Premier Radio. Premier Radio will help, will take you the drive, the drive through. Amen. And you let, you know, premier drive through and you'll just enjoy awesome praise. Hallelujah. But worship, worship, somebody say worship is different. It is not just an expression of uh, admiration, but it is an expression of adoration 
and it's an expression of reverence. Amen? It is only reserved for God. And thou shalt love the Lord your God. Amen? Him only will thou serve. Hallelujah? Exodus 23, Exodus 34, 14. We're not going to go too far. We're not going to, you know, if is anyone there, just put it up anyway. When worshiping, you submit yourself completely before God. That's what worship is all about. Submission to God. Amen. It's a stance of, ah, God, you're everything. You are everything. It's a stance of humility. It's a stance of surrender. I surrender. I surrender. But you know, we, when we cry, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. We don't just sing it and then just and act it. But actually deep inside, we haven't surrendered. But one thing that worship does, the more you do it, the more it rubs off. The more you do it, the more it gets in. Amen. That's why when it's worship time, you're just in that place where, you, where you're where you're just surrendering yourself before God. Amen. Where you're giving your all to God. Where you're taking that position that you can align yourself with the will of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Thank you. That's right. Amen. Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, but the hour is coming and now is here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. God is looking for true worshippers. Amen? Ask yourself, am I really a true worshipper? You can then answer that to yourself in your heart. Amen? Am I a true worshipper? What are the characteristics of a true worshipper? Hallelujah. John 4, 23 to 24. Amen? Amen? said but the hour has come the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the father in spirit and in truth he didn't stop there but he said for the father is seeking such to worship him amen God is seeking for you and I to worship him in spirit and in not in fakeness not in you are one thing but you are you're one thing here, but outside you're something different. You're one thing at home, but at work you're something different. You're one thing in church, but with your friends outside, you're something different. No, God is looking for not Sunday, Sunday Christians, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday Christians. Somebody shout, is it 365 affair? Amen. In other words, if you long to go where God is going and to do what God is doing, then you're going to have to move into a deeper level of authentic worship. Amen. It has to be authentic. It has to be enough. God is tired of fake Christians. Even me and you are tired. Of fake Christians. How much more God? Christians who are not real. Christians who do say one thing but they do another. You can't trust them. They say they are like this but they do the, they, they do the opposite. Amen. Christians who make other people think, you know what, if that's Christianity then I don't want to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. You know there's, you know, there are Christians who, when you look at their lifestyle, Unbelievers look at their lifestyle. May that not be you and I. Unbelievers look at our lifestyle and then they say, I don't want to be that if that's what Christianity is. May you not be that person at work. Amen. May they know you as a defender of the name of God. May they know you as the one that they cannot swear around. Are you with me? When I was, in, when I was still teaching... And we're planning Christmas dues for teacher, we, teachers. We want to go out, end of term stuff. Every end of term we have like a do or like, some, you know. And people want to go. 
to places and they have to put me into consideration knowing that I cannot be around where there's you know too much of all the cigarette smoking and you know the venue has to be something that appeals to me and my colleagues wherever I go they will always ask is this going to be okay for you Doris is this going to be this is what we're thinking is this going to be okay for you are you with me sometimes I'll walk into our, my, our science, small science staff room because I was a science teacher, not the main staff room and somebody would just walk in there maybe from class, somebody has upset them so much and maybe I'm sitting there I have a free period, and the person just walks in and is about to swear because teachers do swear they do <laughs> but uh, they don't swear in front of the children but they come to staff room to swear but once that person comes in there and sees me even someone who did it just saw me and said, oh, so sorry, Doris, I didn't know you were there. Pardon my French or whatever. Does that make sense? You cannot be accepting behaviors that you shouldn't, that you're not, you shouldn't be accepting around you. People cannot just behave. No, because you, do you know what? You actually, do you know, as Christians, even though the world thinks we're not tolerant, we're actually the most tolerant people. Christians are the most tolerant people. Amen. My son just started working after he just finished his A-levels and he got some, you know, job from Amazon. I said to him, first of all, I said, sit down. What are the church days? He said, Tuesday night. He said, yeah. He said, what else? He said, Wednesday and Friday night. He said, yeah. This week, we, I didn't even realize that choir was meeting on a Thursday night. I didn't. Watch this. I said, what else? He said, Sunday. He said, fantastic. I don't care how much they are paying for those hours on those evenings you know say yes mom i know you don't go there not christians that as soon when they say ah you have to work on sunday is that okay yeah yeah that's all right eh? they won't try it with muslims and you know what as christians you don't have to say it's okay because he told them he said no i don't do sun i won't work on sundays i can't work on sunday morning because I'm going to be at church. That's what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. Wherever you go, no matter the job, doesn't matter how much they're going to pay you, they will respect your faith. You don't, you don't realize it. You don't actually realize it. So you think that if you say, I can't do it, they will take the shifts from you. They won't. If you take a stand and say, I don't do because I have to be in church and it's important for my faith. They'll just, oh, that's all right. That's okay. I'm telling you, that's what you do. There are days that are separated for God as Christians. You don't go and accept work on those days. Anyway, if you yourself don't have respect for those days, is it them that will respect it for you? Hallelujah. And then we go, I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is all I long to do. I Up there, it's not enough. I will, I will. It has to be everywhere around you your work life, your home life, everything, your parenting, your marriage. You must honor God in your marriage. We've been talking to singles and get ready, singles, for time for singles. I think it's happening next week, Wednesday. All of that will be communicated to you, uh, and but don't miss it. But even in marriage, you need to honor God. Your worship means you honor your spouse in your marriage. You can't be singing, I worship you, almighty God. But at home, you have no regard for your spouse. You can't come here and be singing, have your way, Lord, have your way. 
Oh Lord, have you? And we know now, Christians, we will go all emotional. Have your way. If anybody steps on you at home, they are finished. But Lord, don't have your way on my husband. He's 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 he's, he's, he's a he's a jerk, like they say. <laughs> you know, don't have your way on him. But have your way. Don't have your way on my sister. Don't have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. But don't, you don't know the same mercy is extended to everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. Talking authentic worship. By the end of today, you will understand what authentic worship is. Worship that, and it's not only, we're saying worship that comes out of the heart. True worshipers, what Jesus is talking about. But it's not only that. But it's interesting that even in the Bible, worship is as spiritual as it is physical. Somebody say it is also physical. It's also physical. In other words, all over the Bible is littered places where people were prostrating on the floor. People are positions. Your body can worship God. The Bible tells us all about your body can worship God. Amen. Lifting up of holy hands, that is also in worship. The way you dress, it is worship. I can't stress that one enough. Amen. Hallelujah. The way we look, the way that we we sing and all. So there's the physical side. Don't think, oh, it's all about my heart. We said this before, didn't we? It's not all about your heart. It's also about your body. Hallelujah. It's also about not just how you look, like as not just your body, how you look, but how you, that's why some people can roll on the floor in worship. And you don't go and say, oh, what's wrong with those people? No, they are worshipping. That's why some people can just lay prostrate. On the, actually, the, the Hebrew word is actually translated. The Hebrew word that is translated into worship is actually prostrate. It actually means to prostrate. Amen. Hallelujah. But you can't be prostrating before a king and then disrespecting him in your attitude and your actions outside. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm a true worshiper. Amen. Yes, the root meaning of the Hebrew word that we translate worship is to prostrate. And also to bless. In Hebrew, actually, the word is to kneel. I don't even understand the connection. To kneel, to bless, to kneel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So throughout Scripture, there's... All sorts of, so we're talking about worship being also physical. That's why you don't, you can't say you're worshiping. Even though some people say, okay, worship in the heart. I'm singing in my heart. But you, <laughs> I'm singing about, you should sing out, amen? You should sing out. The Bible says, make a joyful noise, you know, unto the Lord. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout aloud unto the God of triumph. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So lifting up of hands, clapping of hands, kneeling, bowing, is all physical acts of worship. Amen? We need to do those, but we just, we just need to make sure that they are also aligned with our hearts spiritually. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. So you, just, you don't only bow your head and, you know, knock. There's some religion, if you see how they knock their head on the ground... Because that's what they know to be worship. How they knock their head. And when you look at their forehead, you know what, what religion or what kind, what, what facts or what uh, sect they belong to. Amen? <laughs> My dad used to belong to a sect in Nigeria. They wore white garments. He, don't worry, thank God. He got born again before he passed on. But he used to belong to a, a church sect in Nigeria called OOO. Anybody heard of Olumba Olumba? Lift your yeah. <laughs> it's a sect. You heard me say that. And so they knock their heads on the ground. So if anything good happens, you know how we say oh, we're rolling on the floor, we're thanking God, or we're, when anything happens, they will just go on the floor. <laughs> Three times, OOO, on the floor. And they say, ah, Papa, thank you. The papa they're talking about is not God. It's Olumba. Somebody say, God forbid. I will not worship a man. I will only worship God. But you know what? That, they knock their heads on the ground like how many times? In a day. So when you look at their foreheads, 
is shining. You just know that's an oh, oh, oh. Amen. They, you have, they're more common in the southern part of Nigeria. <laughs> that's why south, south. Amen. Amen. So I'm from River State, so, but you know, Cross River, Akwai Bomb, that kind of, yeah. Amen. But yeah, so that's what they do. They knock their heads on and you think they think they're serving God. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy on them. Mm. Many of them have come out and given their lives. My dad came out and repented and gave his life before he passed away. Praise God. Hallelujah. My mother led him to Christ. My mother led him to Christ. Amen. And he believed. Hallelujah. He actually went into Pentecostal church. I tell you, that was, that was just the epic thing that God did for us. He actually went into Pentecostal church on a Sunday to worship. Do you understand? This was, he, he persecuted us so much, my dad, as we all we were getting born again and just loving God and worship. I remember my dad throwing my Amy Grant, one of my first Christian cassettes. Cassette, those days it's cassette. Cassette. He just, he dropped it on the floor. He, he called, he, he dropped it and then he smashed it with his leg. He said, bring that, bring that tape. Anyway, bring it, bring it back, cassette. He took it, he dropped it on the floor, he smashed it and he looked at me. Crusader. And he walked <laughs> I can never forget. He walked away. I'm telling you, the persecution we faced from my dad. Ah. Look at them. And then because we went, we did SU. We, you know, myself, my sisters, people, everybody went to boarding house, came back and got born again. And then my mom was already ordained in a Pentecostal church. As you all know, my parents were separated. So when we all came back and became born again, we of course hooked up with my mom and she would organized for us to come to Church of God Mission in Nigeria then. So she was in Church of God Mission and we would all go. And my sisters were my half-sisters. And when we would come back, they are in trouble. Why? Because he would look at them. He would, me, I would stand apart. He would say, stand here. I will stand here. Then he would say to these people, stand here. Then first of all, he would face them. Is that person your mother? You are following somebody else's mother. Stupid people. Following, is that person your mother? Then he will deal with them. Then he will not come to me. You want to deceive other people in this house? <laughs> Let's not go there. Let's close service. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody say, I'm a true worshiper. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the process of being worshipped, God communicates his presence to men. Every time we come to worship, did you not see what happened this morning? Every time we worship from our heart, every time we release ourselves, God communicates his presence. He comes down. And you know when God's presence comes, everything is possible. Miracles, change, answered prayers. Hallelujah. Anything is possible. Hallelujah. What happens when we worship? I'm not, this is not going to be taught. Pastor Emmanuel is preaching next week, so I'm going to conclude this. Just five more minutes, and then I'll go. Amen. Let me read everything that I've written to you. Worship allows you, if you can write, write. Worship allows you to become submitted and then submissive. It is God's will that we become true worshipers. And when something is God's will, He will move heaven and earth to help us do that thing. Amen. He wants us to, close, to be so close to Him, as close as possible. He longs to open the windows of heavens and pour out more and more of his love on us. Our only job is to surrender to him on a daily basis so that he can daily give you more of himself. Amen. And the thing is, the Lord is such a gentle man. He will not force it. Amen. He will never force us to do anything. He enjoys worship when you voluntarily give it to him. He won't force you to give him worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. And, 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 and so he will never force it. He just leaves the act of surrendering to you. That act of surrendering, he leaves it to you. But when you do, when you surrender, everything is different. Your life is different. People look at you, they know there's something about you because you're living a surrendered life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Worship expresses your total dependence on God. Worship exposes your inadequacies 
and then allows you to go past them. Amen. And the funny thing, he doesn't expose it to other people. He exposes it to you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Worship exposes those weaknesses. So in the place of worship, God will be doing some inner surgery. Amen. Somebody say inner surgery. I feel like you're sleeping off on me. I'm going to round off in a minute. Worship brings us to a place of humility and surrender. A reformed life is a changed life, a regenerated life, a life surrendered, a life yielded, a life given to God. Amen. But what's the difference between true worship and adulterated worship? Amen. You and I must guard against adulterated worship. Amen. They asked a very famous criminal, he used to bank, rob banks in America. They asked him, why do you rob banks? He said, because that's where the money is. There's somebody that's going to jail there. They said, well, why do you? He said, because that's where the money is. Amen. And I feel like that's the same thing Satan is saying. Why do you attack the children of God? Because that's where worship is. That's why he will come and attack our unity. Why? He's not attacking us. He's attacking the worship of God. Because anything that belongs to God, he attacks. He wants it for himself. He told Jesus, if you do this, I will give you this. If you do that, if you worship me, I'll give you this, this X, Y, and Z. And just like he tells people on the earth now. But what happens when he gives them, when he tells people, men, women, humans, when devil tells them, I will give you money, I will give you this, I will give you that. We know. We know that at the end of the day, he takes everything and he takes their life. There's nothing Satan will give you for free. Only God is the giver of free gifts. Satan, anything Satan gives you, he's coming back for it. Time seven. You ask for money, he will say, give me seven heads. Say, make me a millionaire. He will say, give me the, the head of your best child. Give me the head of your, your wife. Give me the head of your... Si whatever. Satan does not play fair. Satan does not play fair. He wants God's worship. What belongs to God is what he wants. And that's what he's fighting. He's not fighting you and I because he, it is because of us. No, it's because of the bigger picture. Amen. He hates to see God honored. So he would do anything to stop this. He would really like to steal all of the affection that we have for God. Satan would like to steal it. But somebody say it's not possible. It's not. Amen. Hallelujah. How do you know adulterated worship? That worship that God will not take. Worship that God will not accept. Amen. Psalm 15. Lord, who shall abide in your tabernacle? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness. I wish I could write it so that you don't think I'm saying the same word. He that walketh what? Uprightly and worketh righteousness. In other words, there's the walk, transformation, and there's the work, reformation. He that backbited not with his tongue. Is that where I am? Or do it evil to his neighbor. Amen. All of those bad things. Or take up, take it up a reproach against his neighbor. Amen. In whose eyes a vile person is despised, is contempt. In other words, a true worshiper, you can't see evil and embrace evil. You can't see vile people and be okay with it. You can't be around vile people. Amen. Someone says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate. And he shall be like a tree planted by the... That bringeth forth his fruits in it. His leaves also shall not. Whatsoever he does shall. But the ungodly are not. They are like chaps which the wind. 
drive it away. Come on now, you were doing so well. <laughs> Give yourselves a big hand. Hallelujah. But I was doing better. Give me a big hand then. <laughs> Thank God. The word that we're studying is entering. That's really good. That's really good. It's entering. The word of God is entering. I, I, that was awesome. Amen. Amen. The word of God is good. Now, your worship must be as holy as the one that you are worshiping. Because the one you're worshiping is a holy God. Holy God, holy worship. Holy God, holy people. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 5.23 Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, go away, first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Where am I going? Worship is a gift. Your worship is actually a gift. It's not just, it's, it's not just about money. Your worship is actually an offering. Amen. Beloved, I... What's that? 12, Romans 12, 1. Who remembers it? I beseech thee, this... Hallelujah. By the mercies of God, that you what? Come on now. Give it to me. A living sacrifice unto your God. Holy and acceptable. Which is what? Your reasonable service. Ah, this is how we need to be preaching now. This is good. <laughs> but, the, but you were reading it before that came up. So well done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is good. This is good. Ah, let's clap for Rock Church. You can't pass through this church and not know no scripture. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship is giving God the best that he has given you. Be careful what you do with the best that God has given you. Whenever you get a blessing from God, give it back to him as a love gift. Take time to meditate, worship. And after, you know what, when, what it means is what, is, what I'm saying is, when he blesses you, worship him with that blessing. How? By presenting it back to him and asking him, what would you want me to do with this blessing? That is worship. Whenever you ask God, Lord, what, so you're not afraid of what God will say. D does that make sense? You're not afraid of what God will say. Because you know he can say anything. But then again, why not? He, he is the one that gave you the breakthrough anyway. Hallelujah. God needs to be able to trust you with favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift up, stand, get up on your feet and let's just, let's, let's end. Let's close this. Worship, uh, worship, is, uh, worship is a time of emptying your love. Amen. Emptying yourself. Emptying your love unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. I will worship you for who you are. Give me a good comfortable key. Hallelujah. I will worship you for who you are, Jesus. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are, Jesus. I will worship you for who and your hands. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are, Jesus. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are, Jesus. My soul take your, your promise, your, your love and your, your love and 
Yeah. 